everyone and welcome back to Shelf Life, a podcast where we discuss books, their philosophies and most importantly, our personal relationship with a book. Now last week, I am very proud to say we achieved, we unlocked a very huge achievement. Um, last week we did an episode on Cobalt Blue, which was a book that was very close to my heart and it's written by Sachin Kundalkar. And we found out that Sachin Kundalkar actually reposted uh, a story that I put up about our podcast and he thanked me for sharing the link. And that was a huge moment for us here at Shelf Life. It, it meant a tremendous deal for us and I just, I think I'm going to frame that <laughs> screenshot that I have and put it up in my room or something. Uh, but yeah, that was a huge thing. And I'm so happy that, you know, we got where we wanted to go with that episode. And uh, there, there were a lot of you who said that uh, you really, that episode made, made you want to pick up that book and read it. And that is our goal here at Shelf Life. We are trying to make the experience of reading more fun um, by telling you that you know books connect to your life they connect to your personal life and uh, they change you so that meant a whole lot to us and uh, thank you moving on this week's episode we have another favorite of mine uh, it's a book that is quite popular especially with the Indian crowd. Um, and it is a book called The Namesake. Uh, it is written by Jhumpa Lehri. It was published in September 2003. And uh, throughout the years, I mean, I picked it up when I was, I think, 15. Yeah, I was 15. It was one of the first um, Indian writers' books that I had picked up. Uh, after I think Arundhati Roy's God of Small Things. And I I really wanted to read more about the Indian experience, about characters that I could perhaps properly imagine and picture characters that maybe looked like me or sounded like me, something on those lines. And I picked this book up and I think it would be very apt to say that this week's episode and uh, this week's anecdotes are going to be completely dedicated not to me and my life, but to my parents and their life. So The Namesake is a book about uh, a family of immigrants, of Bengali immigrants who moved to the United States um, in the years in late 1960s. And um, it it just traces their entire life uh, through the 1960s, uh, you know, to them raising their children there and losing their parents back home, but also just everything that they go through in in their life in a foreign land. And um, it ends somewhere in the early 2000s. And it's a story about mostly about three people. Um, of a family of four and I felt that this episode would be more apt if it was about my parents considering that they were immigrants too at one point. Uh, I was born in the United States. My parents lived there for about six years, seven years I think. I lived there for a good two years of my life uh, and when they went there, when my parents went there, uh, they didn't know anybody. And their story was a lot like Ashima and Ashok's story, um, who are the prime characters of the namesake. So before I get into the themes of the book, I want to tell you a story that my mother told me um, when I asked her about, you know, just her experience in the United States and what it meant to her. And... I remember the way that I asked her that was I told her, you know, when you went there, when you went to the United States for the first time, and my mother had never traveled um, to the West before. 
she'd i think traveled only once before outside india she'd lived in berin and she'd never gone anywhere else but this was the first time she was traveling and uh i asked her the first time that you went there and you realized you know this is your life now you are in a different land you're in a different universe and what was that moment when you realized that you are in the united states of america when did you realize that you'd left home and she said that she didn't really realize it until she landed there she didn't in fact she didn't realize even after she'd landed in the us um uh, she realized it much much later and she says that it was october 1997 uh she was traveling with a 2 month old baby which is my older sibling and um she was traveling alone she didn't she, my father was going to pick her up at the airport in US and she remembers uh sitting in the taxi uh and going to a new house a house that she was going to be living in for she didn't know how many years then but uh that was going to be home now and she remembers traveling in that taxi and uh looking outside the window and she saw that there were people who were jogging and <laughs> it's funny because uh my mother recalls this with a lot of uh surprise and shock almost <laughs> um she she said that you know she absolutely couldn't believe it because it was afternoon and who jogs in the afternoon nobody jogs in the afternoon in india <laughs> it's too hot but um she recalls this little detail and um and she asked my father i mean why are they jogging in the mon- uh, in the afternoon and uh, he said this is just how they do it here and that's when she realized that okay i am in a different land i'm in a different world and this is the american way of doing things and the way that i do things is always going to be different and i want to connect that sentiment to directly to one of the most important themes of the namesake of the book that we're going to be discussing today which is the theme of familiarity and what it means to the whole indian experience um and i think that familiarity that we keep seeking i think as indians we seek it the most um uh, the essence of being indian i think is to find the joy in things familiar things that we can understand things that we comprehend uh my mother's strongest memories in a foreign land in a land that she wasn't familiar with is uh very arbitrary there are arbitrary things and this is why because there's nothing that was familiar she remembers the cold she remembers winters that would sprawl over for you know just months together she remembers really really long hours of the day and strangers who would compliment her child things that were not familiar to her she remembers and they are her strongest memories of a time that she spent away from home and that really made me think of you know what this familiarity or the concept of familiarity means to us as indians uh how many people and how many ideas do we grow attached to or habituated to simply because they feel familiar and this is something you can think about as well and it happens a lot in the book it's the first pinch that they feel that they feel the first sting that they feel uh, ashima and ashok when they move to the united states in late 60s um ashima understands it way more than ashok because you know she's at home all day uh she's alone and she realizes that everything around her is different 
Everything around her is new, is something she's never seen before. Even the bed that she is sleeping in, even the food that she's eating, even the kettle where she heats her tea, everything is different. And when the little details are different, you understand just how difficult life can become. And the sting of being away from people that you love, people that you are familiar uh, with, that comes back. And that is what creates a certain void inside you. And it created that void inside Ashima as well when she went to the US. And, uh, you know, that brings you back to another major theme of the book, which is commitment. And I told you here that uh, I think the essence of being Indian uh, is familiarity and the connection with familiarity. Uh, but I think the most uh, evident, the most prominent thing in the book uh, would be the struggle that all the characters feel with commitment and the generational gap that comes out uh, with how people, with how the people in that family deal with the concept of commitment. So you see Ashima and Ashok, who clearly belong to a different generation, uh, for them, commitment means something a lot different. Uh, it is a contract. It is something that you cannot go back from, ever, no matter what. Uh, you commit because you are familiar, A. You commit because you have to, B. Uh, you commit because it is the right thing to do. It is your duty. It is what you owe to your family, to your name, to your existence even. And Ashima and Ashok commit to each other because of that, because of that familiarity. Um, but the generational gap comes in when you realize that for Gogol, who is their son and who has grown up in the US, who has resented his Indian heritage for as long as he's lived, uh, who wants nothing to do with uh, the life that his parents have led, when you see him and when you see the life that he wants to le live and, you know, that he seeks out, you understand that Gogol does not commit because things are familiar. He does not commit because it might be something that he's seen his entire life. And... I think, you know, I know that Jim Palleri wrote this when it was, you know, it was published when it was 2003. She must have written it a few years ago, uh, even before that. But I think that generational gap, that conflict that comes with the gap, I think that holds true even now, even years later. And I think it's quite timeless that we will never be able to understand the idea or the concept of commitment the way our parents understood the idea uh, and concept of commitment, right? I mean, I can tell you my own thing. Uh, my parents committed to each other because they were familiar with each other, because they had been around each other their entire lives. Not that they had been together in any way, but they had been around each other. They grew up around each other um, in familiar settings. They committed to their careers, to their lives, to everything because it was familiar, because it was something that they just had to do. Whereas I think with my generation, uh, with my sister and myself and even friends that I have, for us, commitment to things that uh, seem natural may not be natural anymore we ask questions, we rebel. I think rebellion is the most natural thing to do, <laughs> um, especially at, at our age. And I think somewhere inside all of us, uh, we don't like to commit to things that feel familiar, right? Um, think about it. If you've lived in a town for your entire life, 
say you've lived in a little town somewhere in i don't know maybe karnataka or kerala and you've grown up there you've gone to school there your parents are there everything um but if someone asks you would you want to spend your whole life in that town or do you want to maybe settle down somewhere else go to the us or you know uh, find someone from a different world your answer would definitely be yes um if you're someone from the younger generation right and that's the conflict that ashima and ashok face when it comes to dealing with their child gugol who is a very americanized version who is uh, a coconut <laughs> which i'm not sure if it's a derogatory term it's not but it's like um it's just fun to say uh brown on the outside white on the inside so gugol is a coconut he is brown on the outside white on the inside and that's the conflict that they face when they're raising their son they don't know how to explain to him what their concept of commitment is moving on we have our next important theme which is identities now identities is obviously you know i mean if you've read the book you would know that identities are the most important thing uh of the book they are it i mean the the ti- it's in the title <laughs> the title is the namesake you understand that this book has something to do with names and it it really does i mean i think more to do with before we get into the identities part of it it's obviously got a lot to do with names and um y- there's of course the n- gogol's name that comes to mind um and his trouble with accepting that he's been given this strange name uh but i think the one that i really want to point out are ashima and ashok's name um now it's i would just like to tell you that in this book the primary motive of this book or the underlying theme actually yeah it's more of an underlying theme it's not a primary motive but it's definitely an underlying theme is that all the characters and all the important characters uh they live out the meaning of their name so if you see gogol uh his life motive almost seems to be to resent his heritage right and to move away from his heritage and away from the things that he's been given that he's been provided by his parents by his ancestry by everything um and in the end of course he comes to embrace it so he accepts the life that he doesn't accept it completely but he embraces parts of him that he had previously resented obviously uh and the other characters in the book who also live out the meaning of their names are ashok and ashima ashok obviously means without grief uh ashima means without borders and i mean i don't want to spoil anything for you but if you've not read the book I suggest you read the book simply to find out how these two characters live out th- the meaning of their names um the true depth of what was given to them and I think you would find that in itself extremely interesting um and with Gogol and uh Moshmi and this is the part that I found very very interesting uh it's a small similarity that i made out um and i'm not sure if you got it too but i hope that you did now mosh makes character i mean in case you haven't um reached that part or if you need a little bit of um r- revision <laughs> i'll just explain to you mosh makes the character that gogol had grown up around she is the daughter of uh one of their family friends their parents family friends and 
when they were growing up she was always the introvert she gogol never really cared about her and later on in the book they become close i think that's how i'd leave it um but and the thing is that what i realized when i was reading the book was that uh gogol and moshmi's characters are actually um very very similar they're in fact a complete reflection of each other um in the way that they seek things by that i mean what gogol tried to seek through maxine who was his first not first but one of his most important white girlfriends uh what gogol tries to seek through maxine moshmi tries to seek through dimitri gogol is trying to seek a different life a life where he can be someone else he can be accepted into a white family into uh the american dream that he had grown up with uh and that's why he stays around with maxine he uh you know follows her and he has a relationship with her because he's trying to be someone else there's a strong need to be the other um uh, in a land that for him is not foreign for him that land is home uh and for moshmi as well um there is a strong need to be the other but the way that she seeks it out the way that um she pulls it out in her life is a lot different and can later you know turns out to be quite traumatic for gogol and for everybody else in her life so she seeks it out through dimitri um and you know i guess that's probably the most um challenging part of growing up um uh, brown in america or the uk or wherever else other than india that you're growing up um it's a conflict that i think kids from that uh second generational immigrants would probably face a lot i mean i wouldn't know but they probably would fo- face a lot how to be um uh, someone else in a land that for you is not foreign that for you is home but when the entire world keeps trying to tell you that it is foreign to you that you don't belong here that you are the child of an immigrant someone who left their home country to come here um how do you still find who you are so that was about identities and now we're going to talk about um one of the last themes that and this is something that i want to uh enrich your knowledge with <laughs> that sounds pretentious but i want to introduce you if in case you haven't been introduced to it yet i want to introduce you to a new concept and um it is a concept in english literature that we call fatalism uh yes so the official definition of fatalism is fatalism is the attitude which accepts that whatever happens has been bound to happen so the acceptance of this thing called fate and the idea that whatever happens happens for a reason and happens because it was meant to happen that way um that is fatalism and i found a lot of that in this book i think this book had a tremendous deal of fate involved and i think it had especially the magic that we associate with fate the mystic side of all things um destiny and <laughs> cosmic um i think one of the most important parts i mean if you've read the book you would know right it's uh it had to be fate a lot of things in that happen in the book the way that you know the story shapes itself writes itself it had to be fate the fact that the letter containing gogol's original name that his grandmother had picked out never reached the us 
it got lost in the mail or maybe she never posted it the fact that ashok's life was saved because of a book because of a few pages of a book um uh, and he could have very well been dead if he had not find found that book the fact that gogol's father was the one who uh, helps him understand f- and fully grasp the meaning of his name and the reason why he was given that the motive the of his life uh the purpose that it serves for his life it had to be fate the fact that ashima chose ashok to be her husband and not the previous two suitors who had come the fact that ashok decides to stay on in the us there's so many things right and of course i don't want to reiterate what we talked about in the earlier episodes because we had talked about this we talked about alternate realities in a thousand planet suns episode right you can check that out um and but that idea of an alternate reality and the existence of an alternate reality can even apply here you can think about what gogol's life could have been had he not been named gogol you can think about what ashima and ashok's life would have been if they had just moved back to um india and i mean i personally definitely think about what my parents life would have been like or what my life would have been like had we stayed on in the us and not come back would i have been a coconut myself <laughs> i i don't know and i i'll never find out but maybe in another universe we would have known right and there's a lot to do with um introspection you think about these things when you read books like these you think about um the fatalism or the idea that f- fate plays the importance that of fate in your own life as well moving on we have reached our favorite part of the podcast which is our favorite question why do we think the story was told now honestly i think the story was told because um personally i believe that storytelling the art of storytelling begins in your family um every story that i have ever been told began with my mother telling me about those stories and uh, i think everybody's first story comes from uh, their families maybe their grandmothers or their grandfathers or their mothers or fathers anybody but the art of storytelling has its origin in your families and i think jumpalari really uh, focuses on that as well she is trying to tell you she's not trying to tell you that you know family is the most important thing in the world blah 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 uh, she's not trying to tell you that you know respect your elders or <laughs> there's no hard and fast rule that she's trying to impose on you what she's trying to tell you is that remember the little aspects of what your parents have told you remember the things that your parents have said to you when you were a child um remember those things because there is magic in them there is some kind of story and the truth is that we don't see it often because we don't perhaps we don't want to see it but our parents have lived quite extraordinary lives as well um even if they're even if they seem ordinary they are very extraordinary um and our grandparents as well they've lived they've lived a life they've lived a full life um and that is only because they found a beauty in the mundanity uh they found some kind of joy some kind of excitement in even the things that seemed sparkless and um uh joyless and 
that is what jhumpaleri and writers that come from especially that write about the indian subcontinent i feel that's what they try to really bring out and that's what i love absolutely love about indian fiction that we strive so hard so hard to find beauty in the little things to find beauty in things that most other authors would overlook we find that and we seek that and we remember that um and then when we're old enough we tell it to our kids and they tell it to theirs i mean i know of so many stories that my mother told me about my great grandparents who were immigrants themselves uh they lived in a very small village they traveled to bombay to create a better life for themselves and that's why i am here in bombay uh and that's why anyone is anywhere so you should probably do that that's a homework for you all you should probably go ahead and ask your parents about their stories about why they are where they are what made them who they are um and where they think they will be in a year's time in 10 years time 20 years time i don't know think about that and ask them that uh another book that i'd like to recommend to you all if you enjoyed uh the essence the feel the vibe of uh, the namesake by jhumpaleri would be uh, a book called the shadow lines by amitav ghosh uh this is also a book about a bengali family and it traces um all the twists and turns and uh, the layers that a bengali family goes through and also um that a country goes through and it's a very beautiful novel that i think would be um your favorite too if you enjoyed this novel so go ahead and check that out next week we are going to be uh coming with a, a surprise we are going to have our first special guest and um i'm not going to reveal it to you but i'm also going to tell you that we might have actually i'm going to leave that i'm not going to tell you the surprise uh we, but i'm going to tell you that we're going to have two major surprises and uh i can assure you that you will enjoy it <laughs> so thank you so much for listening i hope you like this episode and if you have any other anecdotes if you have anything to share please go ahead and do so the book for next week i forgot uh the book for next week is gone girl by jillian flynn uh yes we're doing a <laughs> a new novel we're going to do a popular one a really popular one and we're going to really delve deep into it so get ready and thank you so much for listening i'm i'm all alone in this